John chapter 17, verses 6 through 19, which can be found on your pew, in your pew Bibles on pages 1680. Our text this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, starting at verse 6 through 19. We shall be reading from the New International Version. The Word of God for the people of God. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the word you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed you sent me. I prayed for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me. For they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them, and I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I'm coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them from, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scriptures would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I'm still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more as I am not of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal loving God, how great thou art. Lord, you foresaw that we needed your protection. Lord, you offered that protection in the name that the one your father gave you. And Lord, I pray that you allow us to use the same name to protect us when we are in peril or facing peril. Lord, have your way, but be with us, Lord, as we walk this journey. It's in Jesus' name that I pray and the people of God in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth with intention and precision. He spoke galaxies into existence, formed mountains and valleys, filled the seas with life, and adorned the earth with things of various colors and shapes. He surveyed his creation, declaring it to be very good. Beholding the wonders of the creation allows us to catch a glimpse of divine artistry, the vibrant hues of sunset, the delicate intricacies of the beautiful butterfly wings and the grandeur of the mountain ranges all bear witness to God's endless wisdom and creativity. Getting caught up in the mundane moments of life can make it easy to overlook the beauty that surrounds us. But when we slow down enough to take in God's creation, it's hard not to be filled with awe and grandeur. Each sunrise, church
birds. The rustling of leaves speaks of God's creative love for us. And God's declaration that his creation is very good reminds us of the inherent worth of all he has made, including us. But you know, some folks still think life sucks. If we pause for a moment to step outside and behold that beauty of God's creation, whether you look at a single blade of grass or the expanse of the sky, remember it all reflects the goodness of our Creator who made every bit of it with love and joy. Let us unplug from a world that complains about the circumstances that they cannot control and plug into the word of God that has given man as a lamp into his pathway. Our sermonic sermon this morning is my joy. And if I could add a second title, it would be the full measure of my joy. And that's what Jesus said to his disciples. He wanted to give them his joy. And know that the world cannot, the world cannot steal your joy. Or can anyone take it from you? It's the pressure. It's the stress. It's conflict. It's broken dreams. Life is full of adversities. And when Jesus says we have trouble in this world, he wasn't. Hardly a day goes by when we don't face some type of adversity. Many are troubled, like getting stuck in traffic or having a tiring day with a sick baby at home. Others are life-altering, like a devastating diagnosis or the death of a loved one. But according to James chapter 1-2, we should all consider it joy. When these trials of life come our way, they may not seem possible, yet it is when we choose to see our pain and our struggles from God's perspective, it doesn't matter very much. Who here this morning doesn't enjoy compliments or accomplishments? Most of us like being recognized for our own achievements, whether it's landing a big client at work or winning the chili cook-off or hitting the lottery or training a baby to sleep all night. That's real happiness. <laughs> Justin knows about that. He doesn't have a baby, but he couldn't sleep last night. These are all good things. But God's purpose for us is so much deeper. And Galatians 5 talks about the fruit of the Spirit, reminds us that our character is more important to God. And that's why he instructs us to walk by the Spirit so that the deeds of the flesh are replaced with God's attributes. Love is the foundation of all the virtues of life. We cultivate love by embracing God's fruit of the spirits because of God's love and joy for us. Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, but joy is contentment. Regardless of our circumstances and growing in it is in our confidence worth celebrating this morning. You see, in the context of our scripture this morning, Jesus' petition is to his Father on behalf of his disciples. The prayer that Jesus offers for the apostles, in effect, that they find joy in their labor. These men are personally trained by Jesus with experience massive resistance when they preach. However, it is their teaching that will lead others to faith in Christ. And so it has been for more than 2,000 years. 
What Jesus says in our text has application for all believers this morning. The faith of these men is proven by their acceptance, their belief in the message that Christ taught them as he has taught us. Christ prays that these men will be strengthened in their resolve even as they are commissioned to remain in the hostile world as lambs to be slaughtered. The Bible is full of stories about people who are hurting, who are in pain. In Psalms 22, the writer cries, My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? When immersed in hurt, pain, sorrow, and strain, we too have questions and may cry out to the Lord. Or we might withdraw in silence like Job, who endured staggering losses. But no matter how we experience the anguish of the adversity, we aren't alone when we invite God to come into our hearts. That's the joy. No question, the best personification of biblical joy is the story of Job. Are you kidding me, Pastor? He was stripped of every good thing he had on this earth, but he never lost his faith in God, and Job knew his experience was unfair, and he did not sugarcoat his pain when he went to the Lord in prayer. His conversations with God were frank, yet, yet he never forgot once who God was. He knew who the potter was. God did not promise us happiness, folks, but full measure of joy. Growth, there is a big difference between joy and happiness. Happiness is a reaction to something great. Joy is the product of something great. They sound like pastor. Let us never forget, but there is a difference, and nor fail to enjoy I am overflowing with joy in all of my 
Consider what Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 33. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and will not fade away, and I have reserved a place for you in heaven. Amen. Hmm. That's real joy, folks, to know that God, when you are following his message, his teachings, he has a place reserved for you. Joy isn't just a feeling, it's an awesome assurance of confidence overflowing within us because of who we are and what we have in Christ. His joy becomes our joy. And when he says, my joy for the disciples in his full measure, that includes each one of us. When did his joy, where did his joy come from? First of all, it was taught by Jesus his words are not hollow, but filled with conviction. Blessed are you when men hate you. Be glad in the day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is greater than heaven. Second, joy comes not from man, but the Holy Spirit. Not of our own efforts or our imagination or our family upbringing. The faith of the Spirit is joy. And spiritual speaking, we receive the word in much tribulation with the joy of the Holy Spirit. How else should we look at it? Joy comes from belonging to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not just an eating and drinking affair as we hope to sit at the table with our Lord, but it's a righteous one filled with peace. good and faithful servant. Oh, those are words that we want to hear. Yes? Yes. Joy comes from seeing and knowing Jesus as Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. And joy comes from fellow believers who work hard to help us focus on this source of joy rather than deceitful circumstances that the devil would allow us to see. And when we're going through difficult times and pains and disappointment, do these experiences change your conduct or your disposition? Yeah. Are you one person when life is running smoothly? Or are you a different person <laughs> when hardships come upon you? We've all been there. And although trouble has the power to take away our happiness, listen to this. All those trouble has the power to take away our happiness. You don't let it rob you of the joy that you have in Christ. You see, circumstances may change. Trouble will come. But those who have trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior, their relationship with him will never be altered. And the fact is the foundation is the joy in every situation. You need to change your perspective if you want to experience some joy. When Paul wrote the book of Philippians, he was in prison, chained to a Roman guard. And even though he wasn't sure what awaited him on the other side, he was suffering the hardships of prison life. But his letters to the Philippians was filled with joy. Oh, my goodness. Towards the end of the letter, Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I say again, rejoice. Paul had every reason in the world to be miserable and unhappy, but his focus was not on his external condition, but on his relationship with the Lord. His relationship with the 
the Lord. His joy-filled experiences didn't match his environment or his circumstances. But in the midst of all these difficulties, Paul had triumphant joy that overcame his circumstances. He remembered my joy, not your joy, but my joy, the joy that Christ gave him. And as a rule, we grieve when we lose something of something. And the obvious cause of grief is the loss of a loved one. And we also experience grief deeply when we lose a family member. But what if we lose a family pet? We are attached to that pet. We grieve too. We grieve too. To grieve is the experience of deep sorrow. It's painful. And have we given any thought that our hurtful words, our speech sometimes, our childish behavior may cause the Holy Spirit to grieve? As a rule, we don't think about those things because you're selfish. But when you allow God to come into your circumstances, you experience his joy. And last, my joy, my joy comes from the satisfaction and satisfying the text of tribulation. We also exult in our tribulation, knowing that tribulation brings to perseverance and perseverance, proving character, and proving character of hope. Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various risks. But know this one thing. If you are in Christ, Christ has prayed for you, and he's already given you something that man cannot give you, and that's his joy. And he prayed to Father, Father, give them the full measure of my joy. Amen. Amen. Father God, as we come to you this morning, Lord, we know that life and circumstances and this journey in life is fraught, fraught with peril. But Lord God, we thank you for every minute, for every because, Lord God, we know that you walk with us, you in us, and you surround us with your Holy Spirit. And for that, Lord God, we are thankful, but more than thankful, we have your joy, your contentment. Thank you, Father, for blessing us in such a way that your joy will